Good morning. Welcome to the premium public video forecast discussion for Friday, March 29th, 2024. Of course, it is Good Friday for those that are celebrating as we are entering the Easter weekend. And we'll talk about that. And we'll talk about a very interesting evolving weather pattern where we're pretty much setting up a clash of air masses. And that's the name of this video for today, a clash of air masses. And we're going to show this very, very dynamic, interesting, and in some cases, I guess you could say almost artistic uh, evolution of the weather pattern. Now, currently, we are seeing clearing skies over Long Island, still cloudy around eastern Long Island and around Connecticut. Showers are over portions of southeastern New England, but nowhere near us. Certainly good news for Mets fans who are dying to start their opening day and of course philly fans as well now you, you can see the winds are from the northwest around 10 to 15 miles per hour it is going to be breezy today so you're going to want to wear a coat if you're heading out to either the phillies game or the mets game but the good news is that clearing skies are on the way as you can see on the weather tap radar and surface map let me just correct this real fast this happens the rainfall is here this is a great example here of how you don't just look at the radar but you look at the observations because if you look at the radar you think oh look light rain here over much of long island but in reality back here it's just cloud cover what's basically happening is that dry air is coming in at the lower levels of the atmosphere and as a result rain is falling from the clouds but it's evaporating that's why it's also as you can see here a bit cooler out here lower 40s winds are coming in from the northwest like i said this is all exiting out into the atlantic still raining over eastern uh, southeastern new england but that is clearing out still some pretty good heavy rainfall here around the cape that's pretty good stuff we actually had pretty good rainfall around here pushing march to one of the wettest marches that we've seen especially around atlantic city so very impressive rainfall so far for march which is good news i know that everyone wants to go out and they're tired of the rain but trust me this is good news because we get the rain now and by the time we get to the summer and we we have our dry period which we'll get this is going to prevent us shield us from drought conditions and fire conditions and and, and the breast so this this is good news okay even though it doesn't feel like it on the visible satellite picture you can see the sky is starting to clear okay there is our cloud line right here right on long island it should start to get very sunny around city field in about probably about 9 9 30 a.m already very sunny over much of new jersey philadelphia is going to remain that way we zoom out a little bit there's our storm exiting out into the atlantic as you can see not much following behind it for now so from today on through much of tomorrow pretty quiet but notice we have this little cloud pattern here a thermal gradient is developing now let me take you to the water vapor satellite picture there's our trough exiting out you can start to see signs here of a ridge starting to build we're starting to see a transition in our tropical forcing as you know when we talked about this in the wednesday live chat we're transitioning from el nino to la nina and what that means is the pattern is going to be changing the wholesale pattern or the overall themes okay so basically what this means is that when you go into la nina you have a higher potential for a ridge right around florida and the bahamas less shear the subtropical jet stream gets weaker these are all the themes of la nina that doesn't mean that you can't have uh, interesting and and different weather patterns within that theme but that's the overall theme in the atmosphere overall okay so that means that you could still have storms but they also are going to be moving over this ridge kind of foreshadowing here so we can see the pattern starting to evolve here the pacific storm one after the other is coming in and you can see we have plenty of moisture out here towards the west coast driving towards the east coast so how does this play out well let's take a look at the 500 millibar pattern here and you can see for today we have that convergence and confluence that's supporting the clearing sky so the heights are 
crashing in okay and the winds the upper level winds are going to be crashing in so what happens is that winds converge they can't rise obviously so they sink and that these two substances are sinking air so that's why we're seeing clearing skies and that's going to continue to be the case on through tomorrow morning now we have our first little week short wave that comes through tomorrow night into easter sunday morning very weak, very dispersed, not a lot of uh, great lifting. A few isolated showers right around when the Easter Bunny is going to be showing up. But other than that, it will be clearing out in time for the afternoon. So really pretty quiet for Easter Sunday. If you have any plans, go and do an outdoor plans, hang out with your family. Really shouldn't be an issue, especially in the afternoon. You know, in the morning, you might want to dodge an isolated shower, but that is about it. Then we move into next week, and this is where the pattern gets kind of interesting here. See this ridge starting to build? And this trough here, this is all driven by the subtropical jet stream here. And meanwhile, our polar jet stream is being displaced to the north, which is pretty much normal for this time of year. So this ridge starts to build, but the polar jet stream still has a pretty robust upper level low right around the Hudson Bay and around Quebec. So why does this matter? Well, Notice we start to get this little clash here. Notice that the polar jet stream configuration is lined up right against the ridge that's building here in the subtropical jet stream. So you have polar jet stream support and you have a building ridge to the south of you, which is pushing warmer air northward. So you start to see all these, all this lifting starting to show, show up. So this clash of air masses starts to set up a stronger storm potential, driven mostly by this polar shortwave diving in. And so this is where we get the potential for a pretty heavy rainfall event setting up for Tuesday into Wednesday. And we know it's going to have support for heavy rainfall because look at this divergence and diffluence. You see, one of the things you want to look at when you study model guidance is if you see this spread showing up here, okay, think of it like taffy. You're spreading taffy, right? And so you start getting holes in that taffy. Well, the atmosphere is always looking for a balance. That is the driving force of the whole atmosphere is trying to create a balance. And that's why we see storms. This is creating an imbalance. So as a result, what happens is that you get strong lifting. Strong lifting leads to heavy precipitation. But how do we get here? Well, let's take a look at the thermal gradient that I was talking about. This is by Monday afternoon. And look at this thermal gradient. I did decide to do all North America because then you can see the Arctic air is locked up here. Your polar air is locked up in Canada. Your tropical air is locked up here around the uh, southeast and the Gulf Coast. And we are caught in between. New England stays chilly and they'll likely continue to see the potential for some snowfall in the mountains. Great time for the ski season, by the way, for spring skiing. And you have this thermal gradient in place here. And this thermal gradient leads to weak frontogenesis, okay? So as you can see, zoomed in, you can see that thermal gradient and you can see the moisture transport coming northward. So you're having moisture lifting over this boundary. It doesn't get too far north, but you can see it basically opens up the potential for pesky showers until you get to Tuesday. Tuesday, deeper moisture, stronger thermal gradient. You see that very nicely here. Again, you can see literally polar air, Tropical air, we're caught in between. So being caught in between, we get these periods of showers. Now, when we get our storm setting up, you can see the polar air trying to drop southward and the tropical moisture trying to drive northward. And so that's what leads to our dynamic storm. And then I am pretty sure everyone's going to be posting the fact that, you know, we're seeing snowfall showing up here. Just a word of caution, especially this far out. I like the idea of cold air and snowfall over New England, especially central and northern New England and uh, green and white mountains. At this point, expect this air mass to be a bit more modified because what happens is that the mild guidance this far out has a difficult time in adjusting to moderation rates this time of year. So it looks very cold, but in reality, with the higher sun angle and the influence of the warmer ground 
this is going to moderate quite a bit by the time we get to the actual forecast time period. So I do like the idea of higher elevation snowfall, but anything around the coastal plain, most likely just going to be a wet rainfall, even if you see snow on someone posting a snow map or anything of that nature. So let's dive into this forecast and get a little more details for today. Low pressure system exits. Notice the pressure gradient here is going to lead to breezy conditions today. So winds from the northwest 10 to 15 miles per hour times gusting to 25 miles per hour. So you're going to need a coat out there. Temperatures will range from the mid to upper 40s over the northern interior, lower to mid 50s along the coast. For tonight into tomorrow, look for scattered cloud cover with low temperatures in the upper 20s to lower 30s over the northern interior, mid 30s along the coast. Tomorrow afternoon, sky cloud cover is expected with high temperatures in the lower to mid 50s over the northern interior, mid to upper 50s along the coast. On Sunday, Easter morning, there is those isolated showers clearing out pretty quickly. So I don't expect this to be a major impact. Just don't be surprised if you're heading out on Sunday morning, on Easter morning, if you run into a passing shower or two. You know, very light not a big deal by sunday afternoon skies clear and it's actually pretty pleasant look for low temperatures in the mid to upper 30s over the northern interior lower to mid 40s in your suburbs mid to upper 40s in your urban areas and high temperatures will range from the upper 40s to mid 50s over the northern interior mid to upper 50s along the coast and upper 50s to lower 60s in the delaware river valley on monday Look for increasing cloud cover with scattered showers. Not a washout, but certainly some pesky showers hanging around. Look for low temperatures ranging from the lower to mid 30s over the northern interior, mid to upper 30s in your suburbs, and lower to mid 40s in your urban areas. High temperatures will range from the lower to mid 50s. Now that frontal boundary that we were talking about is going to continue to hang around. And as it slowly drifts north because of our intensifying low pressure system, we're going to see more and more scattered showers on Tuesday, but not heavy, at least not yet. You'll have some moderate showers here and there, but certainly a bit of a damp day on Tuesday with low temperatures ranging from the upper 30s to lower 40s over the northern interior, lower to mid 40s in your suburbs, mid to upper 40s in your urban areas. High temperatures will range from the lower to mid 40s over the northern interior, mid to upper 40s along the coast, upper 40s to lower 50s in the Delaware River Valley. On Wednesday, periods of rain can be expected. Now, this is going to be a, a tricky forecast for the northern interior for ice. So if you're in the highest elevations on Wednesday morning, just beware of a little bit of freezing rain being a threat. So just plan accordingly for that. Everywhere else, periods of rain. And this is driven by what we call a triple point. Okay, you have your primary low pressure system here. You have your occluded front here, warm front here, cold front here. You can kind of make it out pretty nicely. And so you get this cyclogenesis or low pressure system development right around northern Virginia. And that's going to lead to periods of rain heavier times at Wednesday morning with low temperatures ranging from the lower to mid 30s over the northern interior. That's where that freezing rain threat is showing up. Upper 30s to lower 40s in your suburbs and mid to upper 40s in your urban areas. High temperatures on Wednesday with that secondary low pressure system developing periods of rain. There's your snowfall in the higher elevations over New England. Temperatures not really that much better on Wednesday afternoon. Looking at lower to mid 40s over the interior, mid to upper 40s along the coast, upper 40s to lower 50s in the Delaware River Valley. That low pressure system exits Wednesday night into Thursday. And this is where we see some of that indication of that snowfall. This looks a little bit more robust. When I'm taking a look at, at ensemble model guidance in this scenario, it's not as strong and further east. So take this with a little bit of a grain of salt on Thursday with this storm exiting. I like, again, snowfall over New England. That, that makes more than enough sense. Uh, don't be surprised to get some rain, snow mix over the highest elevations and showers lingering on Thursday over the rest of the region. Low temperatures in the mid to upper 30s over the northern interior, lower to mid 40s along the coast. High temperatures in the lower to mid 40s over the northern interior, upper 40s to lower 50s along the coast. And on Friday, next Friday, 
clearing out sky cloud cover a lot like today with breezy conditions and low temperatures in the lower to mid 30s over the northern interior upper 30s along the coast and high temperatures ranging from the lower to mid 40s over the northern interior and upper 40s to lower 50s along the coast so looks like the first week of april is going to remain unsettled wet a bit raw and chilly and damp but there will be some nice breaks here and there within the weather pattern just in time for easter and enjoy opening day today that's your forecast for today. Have a wonderful day, and as always, stay safe out there.